call a Friday, and it is a preparation day for the Sabbath, the Sabbath which is the seventh day of the week. It's been that way all the way through history, no matter what some of your traditional teachers teach, it's not what God teaches. Well, brother, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. Our daily walk with Jesus Day 217 of the year 2010. Jesus tells the parable of the rich fool. I suggest you write down, again I said suggest this, or you write down on a pad and paper the chapter and verse so you go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down the bottom to start the start or stop this lecture at your own leisure. That way you'll be able to get more out of it. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into Jesus Tells the Parable of the Rich Fool. And to do that, we go to Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Then someone called from the crowd, Sir, please tell my brother to divide my father's estate with me. But Jesus replied, Man, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Beware, do not always be wishing for what you do not have. For real life and real living are not related to how rich we are. Then he gave an, an illustration. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. In fact, his barns were full to overflowing. He could not get everything in. And he thought about his problem and finally exclaimed, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones then I will have room enough. And I will sit back and say to myself, Friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Wine, women, and song for you. But God said to him, Fool, tonight you die. Then who will get it all? Yes, every man is a fool who gets rich on earth but not in heaven. The rich man in Jesus' story died before he could begin to use what was stored in his big barns. Planning for retirement, preparing for life before death is wise, but neglecting life after death is disastrous. A good life. Jesus is pointing to a higher issue a correct attitude towards the accumulation of wealth. Life is more than material goods. Far more important is our relationship with God. Jesus said that a good life has nothing to do with being wealthy. So be on guard against greed, desire for what we do not have. This is the exact opposite of what society usually says. Advertisers spend millions of dollars to entice us to think if we buy more and more of their product, we will be happier, more fulfilled, more comfortable. How do you respond to the constant pressure to buy? Learn to tune out expensive enticements and concentrate instead on the truly good life, living in relationship with God and doing His work. Our need for daily prayer. You, O oh Christ, are all I want. May your grace abound to me so that in all things, at all times, I may have all I need and abound in every good work. Faith is a gift that grows as we use it, and you hold fast to my name. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dwelt bondably with me. 
Your daily walk on that narrow path will bring you eternal life with the Father and His Son. Good thou art, and good thou does. Psalms chapter 119 verse 68 reads, Thou art good, and doest good. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, here we are on the preparation day for the Sabbath. Are you preparing for the Sabbath? Are you just going your own way? Are you forgetting about God and His commandment to congregate on the Sabbath, the seventh day? How do I know it's the seventh day? By going to Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. You will find that is the seventh day is the one he sanctified and made holy. He did that for no other day of the week. None. But your teachers down on the corner, your, your traditionals, say, come that first day of the week, it makes no difference. James 2.10 says, if you break one of the least commandments of the Lord, you broke them all. That means if you break the Sabbath law, you're a murderer, a covetous, an adulterer, a thief. Hey, that's not my words that's saying that, that's your word. Get down on your knees and repent of following man's tradition. Ask the Father and the Son for forgive you for all of that. And then while you're down there, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of the letter he sent to you that is found in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. I hope you have a great and wonderful day of preparation. With that, we'll leave you for now. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.